Good morning, good morning, hello. Uh, how are you all doing today? Good morning, Xenex. Happy Monday. Uh, too. hello. How are you doing today? So it's a new time. Uh, I figured like this week is going to be equivalent to like the real first week of of like figuring out new schedules. Last week was a little bit weird with Denver Startup Week. But uh, this week is uh, pretty, uh, should be pretty indicative of normal. Um, I'm also sort of like experimenting with things. So like we're starting out, we're starting out with new stuff. Uh, I'm just created a schedule yesterday. Uh, put that up on the actual like Twitch schedule system. So that's, uh, we're going to play with that a little bit. And uh, then um, uh, go with, go with that. So uh basically um we are going to uh be streaming a little bit shorter on uh weekdays i'm prioritizing sleep a little bit more so um aiming for eight plus hours of sleep uh usually don't get like a full nine usually it's closer to eight uh but um sleep who needs that well it turns out uh, it's a good idea it turns out it's a good idea so, um, yeah, I'm going to focus on some sleep in the morning. So that's why the stream is a little bit shorter now. Uh, but then, uh, because my work day ends a little bit earlier, um, I am uh, going out. I'm going to go do some walking at first, then slowly transition that into maybe jogging and more bike riding and some other cardios in the afternoon. Uh, try to, to work on both uh, physical and mental health at the same time. Uh, and uh, let's see. Then, um, then after after dinner, uh, we'll do I'll do a another hour and a half or so stream. So about about the same uh, uh, time time length about the same length of the stream. So that way we'll get uh, European good time zone. I guess it's like a European Asian like okay time zone, and then um, uh, we'll get American uh, sort of evening time zone. So uh, that that's the plan, and we'll see how that goes this week. Um, I am skipping obviously Tuesday this week because I'm heading to the Denver script meetup. Uh, so if you're in town, uh, if you're in Denver and, uh, you want to head out to that meetup, that uh, that looks like it's going to be a good one. Besides that, I'm going to try to only go to one event per week at most. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's good. That's going to be the plan. So that being said, um, let's see any other announcements. Oh yeah. Uh, more, we could do a, um, I should probably do like an official announcement video for like, Hey, you know, my job changed and I'm doing part-time and schedule changes and all that stuff. Probably should have done it as part of that. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, that might be good. Let's uh let me let me actually record something. Wait, I don't need to change anything up. We can just leave up this. Zilby's not here. I don't need cat camp. Also, I need to actually have OBS up so I can see what's going on. Perfect. All right. Let me let me repeat all of that stuff, but now in a video for uh for for YouTube. So here we go. Hey YouTube, Brooks here with Brooks Builds. I wanted to go with a, uh, a I want to give you a quick update on uh, how things are going. So if you follow the live streams, you already know most of this, uh, but my day job situation has changed a little bit, not not a huge amount, just half amount. Uh, so basically, I am on a uh, 25 hour a week contract with my day job now, uh, which allows me to spend more time on both like, you know, life things and uh, on Brooks Builds. So uh, that's what we're gonna see. Now, to begin with, I'm gonna be focusing on uh, just health and make sure that I'm I'm good there. So I'm you know trading in an hour of stream in the morning for an extra hour of sleep, and I'm doing some exercise and some other stuff in the afternoon that I bought with the uh, the 25 hours. But with some of that time, I'm gonna be starting up a, a, a evening stream because I'm not gonna be quite as tired in the uh, the afternoon after work. So I'll be doing. Uh, check out the uh, the live stream schedule, which is on uh, Twitch's uh, schedule page, if you're uh, interested in um, in joining those. But uh, basically, 
uh, shorter VODs, but more of them. That's uh, that's in our future. Uh, also, uh, because we're sort of like I'm beginning the transition to like, okay, I want to see if I can make this Brooks Builds thing work. I applied for the partnership thing with um, with YouTube. Uh, that's the thing that would allow me to potentially monetize videos uh, or at least get some money from the advertisements that they apparently play anyways, regardless of whether or not I'm a I'm a mem um, a partner. And uh, they said it was going to take a month to uh, to get through, but apparently that was a lie. They just put me through in instantly. So uh, I am going to play around with those features. I definitely don't want to just throw up advertisements all over the place. Uh, so I just want to um, I, I'm going to be experimenting to see with what I can do. I know. I know. I have no problem if any of you um, uh, find workarounds for 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 that so uh i you know don't don't worry about about any of that stuff uh i'm mostly excited about the extra uh metrics and other things that the uh that apparently i get um and that's i think that's all i've got for for this update right now we're um i am close to 50 percent of the way through creating articles so uh, hopefully this will help me speed up and continue writing new things for the Axum course. So if you have any suggestions, feedback, or anything else, please leave them in the comments, and uh, I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Thanks. Bye. All right. It is interesting. I turned on I turned on that like instantaneously. It's like okay, here's a few more here's a few more metrics. Uh, so let me rename that file. So what are you? You are, uh, update. On my uh, primary account, I have YouTube premium because I, I use it for the YouTube music and uh, they just sort of gives you premium too at the same time and uh, so therefore i don't notice ads on other on other um systems i think i can see the places where ads go uh but i don't i don't know for certain that that's uh, how it works but if that's true then there's ton there's so m some of the popular streamers or youtubers put so many ads everywhere i definitely don't want to do that like i think I think at most I would want to do like, you know, one at the end, one at the beginning, maybe, I don't know. I'm going to play around with it though. I don't think that there's a good, I don't think it's a good idea to put them in the middle though. Uh, like once you're watching, you're watching and hopefully it's like the ones that you can just like skip. You wonder what a percentage develop. You know what? It would be amazing if the metrics told me that. Is like, okay, you would have made this, but your viewers do that. You should tell them that. I was like, okay, that's interesting news. I'm not going to tell them that, but I really like to know that. I, I bet that Google won't tell me. Even if they could detect that, which I bet, I bet they have ways to detect that. I know that they're constantly trying to find ways to not like to to work around it, like embed it into the video itself and do other things. It's it's not fun. Um, OK, so there's that. And then after that, I think the next thing is uh, oh, continue with. Redis. I'm I'm curious for I I have I been using when I when I pull out Brave I usually like that comes with an ad blocker uh, I use I don't use like really like serious ad blockers anymore uh, mostly for this it's it's ironic mostly for the security concerns 
that the ad blockers may or may not be doing evil stuff. Because I have I have read that some of the ad blockers have sold to other companies, and now it becomes like I don't feel like having to go through and like look through their code to see like are you actually doing what you say you're doing or are you doing something more? Because that sucks. Extensions just in general, ugh, the the entire thing is just is not is not great. Okay, it looks like we left off here. Create the queries. Is that what the manifest V3 is about, right? Well, it used to be like the original the original big bad that that the extensions did was be able to install stuff after the fact. And I think they can still do that, right? They can still install things after the fact and uh, just have new new code to run which really sucks and it, it's it's going to be like a constant okay keep everything up to date because you're you're now potentially uh um you know potentially uh uh under attack from these things that you just brought into your system but i don't know i have to read up a manifest v3 see if it stops that But in the end, it probably won't matter, right? Because it will, um, they'll just find a way around it and uh, it'll, like the race will start again. Okay, before we create our route handlers, we need to create our queries to work with Redis. In this case, we'll create two queries, one for inserting into the Redis store and one to get what we inserted out. We'll put both these queries into a redis.queries, redis underscore, underscore, underscore queries file um, in the, uh, in the redis, in the redis connect uh, module. Okay, so okay, I was starting to put them into here for Redis queries, but I really think we should put this into Redis connect queries. So you know what would be nice. In, in Helix, I was just thinking about a keyboard shortcut to like change to, to swap sizes. Imagine if I could, if I could have like the terminal down here like this, but I want to easily spin it up there, something like that. That would be nice. I could pop it out. I think I can do some like pain. There's a way, there's a way to pop. Okay, no toggle floating, toggle on bed. Oh, okay, so that pops it out. Oh, wow, if I grab the top, I can move it with my mouse. Uh, stacking. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing today? I heard you talk about YouTube. Do you think your viewership is strong enough to end the Twitch deal and dual stream or even go full CJ and just move to YouTube with your Twitch saying, please watch on YouTube. Um, so something that there was a, there was a thing that Twitch did recently, which I needed to like relook through it to see if it like actually affects that. But I think it does. Twitch recently, um, change their terms of service to like stop dual streaming 
even if you're not an associate or partner or like greatly limit it. And like they're trying, they're trying like more and more to sort of like hold on to what they have. Uh, they're basically doing defensive moves as opposed to like offensive, like new features and other really good stuff. I don't agree with that. I think that it's a terrible idea. Uh, and we see a lot of companies do that. I think a lot of big companies have been doing that a lot more recently. Um, I might like that. That is definitely an option. Uh, I haven't like decided full what to go with yet. Like YouTube doesn't care. Like they know that in the end, all the videos are going to end up on their platform anyways. So they're like, yeah, whatever, go ahead and like stream on, on other things and also on us. It's okay. <laughs> they, so YouTube isn't that like confident. I'm in, I'm in number one position. So I don't know. Uh, how about this? There's, there's 10 of us here. Um, I don't think we need to do a poll because there's, there's so few of us. Uh, just tell me, um, would you prefer YouTube or, um, or Twitch? If I were, if I were to experiment with like some, cause I could do that. I have, I'm not a partner on Twitch, so I actually am legally allowed to stream on YouTube if I wanted to. I just can't do it at the same time as Twitch. So I could just like, yeah, do like my afternoon streams or, or something like that on YouTube instead and uh, play around with that. Uh, let's see, what am I doing here? Oh, go into, let's actually move. Source our Redis queries. And we're gonna move this into Redis Connect. I'll put it into the queries. I am affiliated, uh, but an affiliate only prevents me from doing dual streams. So I can't stream at the same time. And then I think they may be, they're trying to stop that for just normal users as well. Uh, oh, you watch YouTube, but you never participate in the comments chats because it's tied to your personal account. Yeah, my, I need to, I, I wouldn't want, probably want to like move a bunch of the stuff I watch from my, like just my, my, cause I started with my Brooks builds account or I renamed it to that. And I just watch everything on that because that way, if I ever chat with something, it's like, I don't have to like keep two counts in my mind. I'm very bad at that, but I might, I would probably want to do that. You know, some you streamers use YouTube and then ask other people to do a pop out Twitch chat. Interesting, interesting. I don't think I can, so I can't do the dual stream, but I can definitely stream on YouTube. I just can't stream on YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Uh, but that's that's the, it's actually one of the reasons why like I have no desire to become a partner with Twitch because it's way too limiting and there's no benefits to it. I basically have like as many benefits as I'm ever going to get on Twitch as an affiliate. Suyash, hello, how are you doing today? Twitch does allow chat on offline streams. Yes, that's true. But I think I would rather just say, hey, join um, join Discord. And we can have like a chat on there. I've I've seen plenty of people do that too. Um, to do, do, okay, so I moved that over there. So close you. Let's open up queries. You're going to be upset because you don't know anything about this. You know, the thing that I, I don't like about the change with Twitch chat. Oh, change visibility. Wait a second. That's not what I want. I want Redis Connect source live. Uh oh, you can't find that. 
What did, what did I do? Uh, so let's see. Redis Connect has. Oh, I need to put it into source. Yeah. All right. That would that would do it. So your source there. So I need to buffer close you. Okay. There we go. This should now this should now happy be happy. Uh, anyways, I was gonna say um, Twitch Twitch changed like the location of offline chat. It's harder to find now. I'm not I'm not super happy about that. Okay, so you're aware of that now. Uh, use Redis Connect. Okay, so this doesn't need to be. I think I can just change this to Super, right? So we have insert, and then we're gonna have a pub async function uh, get. Now that other one, we have the value, but this one, we only need the key. So our key, the stir, uh, but we don't know what this, it's gonna be a value like that. We probably want this to be an option value. Okay, so then uh, value, I probably want this to be the exact same value. I don't know why I sometimes just start, I just um, uh, use, use the muscle memory to copy the value to my clipboard instead of to buffer, which is not exactly what I want. I guess it works, but then I never remember to do like, Command V to paste. I just use P. That that's not that's not right. Okay. Uh, did I just do the same thing? I don't want to do that. I want to go to the right. Okay. So here we go with that. Um. Let's see. Do, do get um. Value is that okay? So in a getting, we're going to okay. So we need to get the key, and then we need to get the pool. Is a Redis pool. Uh, and then I want to return the actual query. So uh, that's going to be a connection dot. Get the value of a key. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so get the value of the key. If this key is a vector, this becomes an mget. Um, okay, so get, uh, we have a key. And that's it. Await and, and it's just option. Wait. It's a I creates types Reddit's future RV. I mean, is that is that it? Mismatch types expected an option value found a oh a result a result okay um Demolroy uh rating with a party of seventy uh Demolroy hello 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 how are you doing today um oh no. 
Ah, okay, hold on. Thank you for that. Nobody told me things were not working. There we go. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Raiders, for letting me know that I that apparently I needed to tell uh, OBS to restart my uh, uh, screen capture because apparently that wasn't working. Uh, so sorry about that, everybody. Uh, hello, Raiders. Hello, Tomorrow. Roy. How are you doing today? That would have been that would have been a fun stream of like you just like staring at nothing and just like listening to me ch talk and type and and do stuff. It would have been a highly secure stream. Uh, Ryan, how are you doing today? <laughs> nice. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Uh, Demoray, how is the stream today? What are you working on? I uh, K Melv, hello, welcome, and Tibby, hello, welcome. Oh, we're doing great. We got some retray logic on 429s done and able to transfer playlists of any size from Spotify to Apple. Oh, so you've got the actual, the transfer working? Nice. I don't, I, I've i only op opened Apple Music recently in like the last two years from like accidental misclicks, <laughs> unfortunately. Maybe we'll have to try it again sometime. Uh, sort of like see, see how I like it now. But um. They keep on trying to like get me to to pay for the um the the free tier. Is there a free tier now or is it like only paid? It's not good. Oh, okay. Well, then in that case, in that case, I'll just stay I I'm on uh Google Music, which is also like I'm not super happy with any of them, but if I'm going to pay for only one service, then that's probably going to be it. Um awesome. Well, I mean, that sounds like a lot of good progress. Uh, we are working on a course, an Axum course. Uh, so if you're, you know, I think we all just have to switch to Apple now. We can use Demaltre's tool. Well, I mean, that is true. That is true. Like, you know, if Demaltre, if you if you write it, Demol, Demaltre, Demolroy, if you write it, we have to use it. I think that's in a contract somewhere. Uh, I mean, I'm certainly I'm certainly happy to try it out. One month of anything is doable. It's the ongoing contract. It's the ongoing payments that I usually get at us it's not a one-way transfer i don't have it set up right now so right now it probably would be a one-way transfer um but yeah maybe maybe the the problem that i run into is that i get tired of like the the playlist that i have and so i i'm like a weird person that i want to reset and start from scratch uh every time so i i'm i'm that i'm that kind of person i was like well I mean, I, I now have the fatigue of my old too many playlists. So let's start over again and get a clean slate. Uh, and then it's like, I'm going to get like essentially technical debt for playlists. Uh, so maybe, maybe we can like, maybe we can clean them up at the same time. I don't know. All my hear music has downloaded MP3s on your phone. Oh, that, that takes me back. I remember when I did that, I got like a little old flip phone and I downloaded hundreds of MP3s on it. Only hundreds, because I think that's all it could could handle. But that was like, that was more than any, any music that you could possibly want ever, right? And that phone had an earphone jack. That was, yeah, that, that was the feature. Um... Oh, you never stop. That scream makes it so much faster. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, what we're working on, we're working on a, I'm actually working on an Axum course, Axum in Rust uh, course that I'm going to be running. Uh, we're about halfway through or so creating articles. So I'm basically writing a, the actual articles that you read through it that teach that, and then also recording videos. And so currently working on uh, Redis. So connecting to Redis, running queries with Redis uh, inside of Axum in Rust. Uh, so we're currently working on uh, the get function. So we wrote an insert. Uh, this time we're going to write a get. Um, if any of you, if if you haven't played with Redis before, it's a in-memory data store. Uh, it's a key value based. It's sort of like a document store. You can store kind of whatever you want, objects, arrays, strings, it doesn't really matter. It's schemaless. 
It's really, really, really good for caches. Uh, it is has optional persistence, uh, where like every minute or so it will persist to the to the disk, which does mean you probably will lose some data if it goes down. But it's not really like that's not his primary role is to like stay up. You're not supposed to be that upset if you like lose it all. Uh, but it's it's pretty good. It's pretty fast. And uh, it's a it's a pretty nice like tool to have in your toolkit if you ever want to use some like caching system. So you don't have to go to like the full database. You just have a little light database for you. Um, OK, so the problem here, I need to unwrap you. And then you're on then you're happy and then you. The trait from Redis value is not satisfied. Required for option by value to implement from Redis value. Hmm. What do you need? Trade bond value. Oh, do I need to just um, add a from Redis value in here? Maybe I do. So maybe instead of two Redis args, this is from Redis value. Oh, yeah. OK, so the insert one is two Redis args, and this one is from Redis value. Uh, OK. I think that I can get away without doing that, is it too? Because I'm just returning from this, and the type, which is kind of hidden, unfortunately, it wrapped, is right here. So it it knows that it's going into this option value, which like this this driver for Redis is dry. Like it's the most popular one, but it's also like I'm really shocked that I have to manually tell it to be an option. And then we'll have to probably, I probably want to handle this error somehow. So I'm going to start with this and then we'll have to do like, and then add an error handling for it. But okay, if I do that, um, let's make sure that this works. I'm going to write you, I'm going to head over to Save it is what we're calling it. Uh, so let's see. So in get it. Now I rebooted my computer. It was running in, in Docker, but I didn't take Docker down. So that may still be up and running. It's actually a good question. That is not up and running. Reddit? No, Redis. OK, you're back up and running. OK, 6379, you should be happy. Um, OK, so in get it, we have the query come in through query params. Let result equals, OK, so this is, I want to change you. Uh, result is now going to be the new, come on, do what I want, fingers. Um, I want Redis Connect. Oh, I think I I think I did that right. No, Redis Connect queries get. Uh, we have the query. Um, oh, the query has this key here. Can I destructure this right here and just say I want a. Get 
get it query key. Key. Uh, and then what were you? Oh, and then the pool. Uh, pool, which we have Redis as the pool. Uh, we await. And that gives me an option with an unknown. So I need it to, oh, I need to tell it what this is. So this will be an option with a, I think we are putting strings into it. You need to be a, that. Okay. And then uh, we can, we can trace, okay, we can tracing, uh, debug this so we can say let's do result uh i can just return this too right am i returning anything from this uh this handler i am not so we're just logging this out okay. um and then debug log. okay that's a thing um you're unhappy can i find module redis queries because apparently i put that into source main why are you in there don't go there that's something that like rust analyzer is doing recently like the last several months it puts things into it puts like even though i have a live and i'm putting as much stuff into the live as I can. It puts like the mods into main, which I don't want. I want them in the mo into live. Um, okay, so you're happy there. Uh, no errors, so we can start up. Okay, so we'll keep you running over here and we'll start insomnia. And let's do our get, ooh, I have save it and we have, um, what is it, get, get it. It is, yeah, get it with the key. And the query, uh, oh, uh, the query parameter is just key. Okay. Okay, so I want get it, query param key, go to. Hello, which I think it's under hello, like that. You become a get, send. Uh, no response here, but that's okay. Here we have incoming body. Nope, don't create a new one. What's, yeah, resize. Um, okay, there it is some Twitch chat. So we get this out. Perfect. Okay. So that works. Okay. So before we create our own, our route handlers, we need to create our queries to work with Redis. In this case, we'll create two queries, one for inserting into the Redis store and one to get what we inserted out. We'll put both of these queries into a Redis queries RS file in the Redis connect module. Uh, I changed I change the name into the uh, just queries. Okay, so there we go. Um, Note that uh, we're using 
uh, generics. Uh, for the values that uh, we're storing into the Redis store. Um, uh, the only difference, I guess like for when saving or when inserting, uh, we are Binding the value generic to, um, is it binding? I think it, I think binding is the, the right technical term for it. Uh, we're binding the generic value to the traits, um, sync and send. Uh, so that they can be sent across threads safely since we're using um, async await. Also need to implement, oh, we also need to bind um, value to to Redis args when um, inserting. Hold on, we can change this around. So uh, we also need to, need to bind value to two Redis args when inserting, uh, when inserting and um, from Redis value when retrieving. Uh, this way, uh, these two um, uh, queries are all we'll need um, when storing into, into Redis. Uh, there's a problem though. Is it there? It's not on, but that doesn't look right. There's, I don't know why that doesn't look right to my brain, but I think it's right. Uh, there's a problem though. Uh, we need, so it's actually had a, like a new section for this. So uh, handling like errors, handling Redis errors. Uh, we have some unwraps inside the queries, which will crash the route handler uh, in the case that something goes wrong. It would be nice to, um, so I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put this. Like this may come before, but it may come after we do our big air handling lesson. So because of that, I'll probably just uh we'll just create an error in here and then have that be be like forwarded on. Uh have our queries return an error. It would be nice to have our queries return an error that um, uh, I guess like return an error instead of just crashing. Um, we'll create our own error. Should we create our own error for this or should we use something like, um, I could use something like error, but we could also just create our own error. Let's just use something like error. It, it's, it's easier and faster. So um, we'll create, we'll, uh, 
this case. Uh, what's the difference between Redis and Memcache? I've never used Redis. Also, hello, Rhodium Man. Uh, how are you doing today? I've never used Memcache. Uh, so I, I don't know if I can explain, like, uh, explain that very well. Um, Redis, like Redis itself is an in-memory data store. So it's like, I don't know if it's considered like a full database. Uh, it has the ability to go to disk, uh, but it's like at a, at a cadence that you, you like over time, as opposed to like per data event. And it's super fast and it's um, been around for a long time. Um, what is memcache? Let's uh let's ask fine. Find. Um describe what memcache is. High performance caching system just different develop okay. Uh hello Dottie. How are you doing today? I think they're the same thing, just different developers for the same thing. Can using Redis as a primary database cost more than Mongo or Postgres? It depends. So Yeah, okay, so in memory is data store, it runs in um So before I get into that other question, it runs Yeah, it 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 sounds like it's basically very similar. So it's going to be the same use cases. Redis supports a wider range of programming languages than memcached. Okay, so. I didn't even ask it to suggest, to like compare it to, to Redis. Redis got brought up <laughs> as like a, uh, a wider support. So memcache focuses on key value pair caching while redis offers more advanced features such as built-in support for data structures like lists sets and hashes ah okay persistent to disk so basically memcache is according to this memcached would be a pared down example and so they they give a uh, resource which is 10 dragonflydb.io talks about that Oh, which is like an ultimate beginner's guide thing. So interesting. Okay. Uh, interesting. So hopefully that helps with uh, sort of like the difference between um, Redis and uh, uh, Redis and Memcache. Um, can, okay. So can using Redis as a primary database cost more than Mongo or Postgres? Yes and no. So like anything can cost more than anything else, unfortunately. So like that's, it's kind of like a, a throwaway answer, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, it's a little bit rough. Um, if you use a hosted Redis, you're going to be chart, you're going to be costing however much that host costs. So it's probably around $15 a month or so. But then again, most hosted Postgres, most hosted paid Postgres and or Mongo are going to be around the same thing. You can get Mongo for free as long as it's like on the free tier. Um, and Redis, you can very easily store and like throw into like a Docker uh, container and throw into like if you have Kubernetes or if you're using like ECS or something, you can just have a Redis layer in there. And then that incurs no extra charge because you're already paying for the um, the the instance uh, that's like, it's running it. And basically, so it, at, if you're, if you're hosting yourself, no extra charge because you throw it into the same system. If you're using hosted, probably another 15 or so dollars per month, uh, probably not costing any more than the other systems. Uh, you get less though, 
than those other systems would give you. So if you have to only pay for one, a real database or Redis, then go with the real database. It's gonna, you need a real database anyways, and you can cache in a real database. It's just slightly more of a pain and slightly slower. Well, okay, it's a lot slower, but it's um, like if you're optimizing for cost, then that's that's the way I would do it if I had to use a hosted Redis. I would probably not host Redis. I would probably just use use like a um, either a Docker container or just like have it on the, the same system that this web server is on. At least until you have enough money coming in to uh, to host, uh, have someone uh, you know pay someone money to do it for you. Does that answer your question, Rhodium Man? Is there any way to make persistent Redis without using any real DB? Yes, uh, Redis itself has the ability to persist to disk, but it's not quite the same way that you would persist um, a normal database type thing. Uh, what you can do is you can tell Redis, I wanna persist every N seconds or so, and it will then store everything that it has to disk and like another thread or another process or something like that. So it doesn't interrupt what you're, what you're working on. Uh, by default, I think that's something like every 60 seconds. So every minute it will store stuff to the disk. Obviously, uh, you might have way more data coming in than once per minute. So, uh, if you do that, then you, um, uh, you, you risk losing anything that happened in the last minute, but Redis really doesn't like expect that to be a problem. So if you want it more often, you would need to, um, you could set that up. You could say like, okay, every one second persist to database, every half a second persist to, to disk, but you run the risk of, of eventually slowing things down or getting weird stuff happening. If like, you just gen generally like you probably don't want like you probably don't want to treat it like a real 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 database like with for persistence wise i would treat it like a cache Wait, where did my cursor go? How did it get up there? I wanted it to go like that. Uh, okay, so we're going to pull in... Uh, what am I cooking? Uh, like for this, um, uh, we are... Uh, we are building a tutorial sort of like a course on um on well this specific one is redis inside of axum Oh, but it doesn't work. I need to keep on forgetting I need to restart the LSP until eventually that gets patched uh, or like the, the next big major update, but it hasn't released yet as far as I can tell. Okay, we're going to use error results then okay we're going to change you to 
So our, now when we're inserting, we're not returning anything. So we can change that. We can return a, a result with nothing in it because we just inserted you. Uh, now if I do that, I can just do an okay like that. And then these unwraps, we change to question marks. Okay, that makes you, oh, and then we don't need this let, so can I just, omit the let binding. Oh, it, it, it is okay with that. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, now with you, we're turning this option value. So I want to turn a result on top of this. Like that, then you're going to be okay. Question mark like that. Uh, is Rust user for anything else other than backend? <laughs> yes, it's also used as a basis for religion. Um, also, hello, supercomputer. Um, I think like all of the major languages seem to have like taken up some kind of uh, bigger than they really are following these days, hasn't it? I would say that Rust these days you can Rust use Rust for in production for almost anything. Um, you can use it in front end, you can use it in back end, you can use it in game dev, uh, you can use it in, um, in IOT, you can use it in, um, uh, like the one that everybody knows crypto is like, is huge in rust has always been huge in rust. Uh, you can use it in, um, serverless, uh, you can make an operating system in it, like Basically, anything that you can program with other generic programming languages like C or C++, you can also do Rust in. And that was kind of like the, the design for Rust. Okay. So that gives me that. Let's, I should probably verify that this actually worked. It did not. Uh, oh, I need to. Do that. Ooh, cannot compile. Um. Oh, right. I need to handle the errors. Okay, so hold on before. Um, we haven't written. Okay, in, in the article yet, we haven't done the route handlers yet. So this is fine. It, we're, we're fine. Route, save it. So now, now we have to handle the errors here, uh, because I can't just, yeah, because like, okay, your, your result. Okay, so we're we have to figure this out. Um, oh, you redeemed changed music station. I have no, I have no music right now. Uh, so that would, that would obviously change that. I, I, the music that I was using apparently has been getting claimed. I was looking at like my things. I've been getting a lot of claims on those. So I need to um, I need to find a better music system. Uh, so for right now, I think I'll just uh, refund you. Uh, and then we'll continue with nothing until I figure out something. I'll have to probably take away that um, uh, that request. So sorry about that. Reject that. I know I don't really have that much to uh, to do with like point wise, but I know that some people get really into it. So, um, let's see. Oh, is it worth? Okay, so command line tools is another big one. Yeah, there's some really good command line tools. Is it worth? Is it worth learning Rust or shall I go with GoLang? 
Um, it depends. If you're going to get a job with one or the other, go with that one, right? If you're just going to do it for fun, then again, choose whichever one is fun. I'm I'm not going to be I'm not going to be able to tell you which one like your life is going to be best with. Unfortunately, there's too many variables for that. So I would, yeah, like supercomputer literally asked that right, answer that right before I did. If you're trying for it to go for a Rusco job, then you have to much yield your time with Go. Yeah, um, there's a lot more Go jobs right now. Uh, and the Rust jobs are re like they pay more uh, according to like the, the list, but they're also less of them. Probably why they're paying more. That being said, um, go with what you like, you feel like if, um, I guess like, is that your situation? Is it for, is it for like what jobs you're going to get? Or is it more for like hobby slash like you want a side project type thing? Okay. So for this. Do I want just a status code? I might want just a. Okay, we could just do an into response, I think, here. Uh, oh, can I actually do that with an error, though? Ooh, I don't think I can. I think I have to do something like this. Do results. And then you are a tuple with the status code. Uh, actually, you could just be a status code then. Now we take you, we map the error. We map error. Oh, we, did it take away the await? We map error here. I want to return the status so we can tracing error this. So error getting uh, getting object and query. And then we're going to return a status code of internal server. And then we can question mark that. Uh, and then you need to be OK of status code. OK. Something like that. Uh, Maxi, rating with a party, uh, three. Welcome, 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 Maxi and uh, and Raiders. Uh, was that subliminal when I say go with? No, no, maybe. I don't know. Um, Maxi, how was your stream? What are you working on today? Okay, so the rodeo round, you're looking for a job as well as building things. Okay, so in that case, Go is probably the better choice. There's a lot more jobs on there. But that being said, network a lot, find out what uh, they're looking for, and um, and then just like learn learn whatever that is. Like you might get lucky and like find like technology that like you exactly want, but most likely it'll be like something slightly different. Uh, stream was awesome. We were working on an auto battler mo uh, made with Bevy. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. Well, I am going to follow you. I usually don't watch streams early in the morning uh, because I stream myself, so I probably won't be able to see you live, but maybe I will. One of, one of these days I might be able to. Uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for the raid again. 
Um, and auto battlers are, they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, I'm terrible at them, but I love playing them. You also stream in the evenings. Uh, awesome. Well, if I uh, if I have time and I see it, I will I will jump in. Um, I'm gonna be experimenting with evening streams uh, starting today, so we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes. Um, and how how are you liking Bevy? I haven't taken a look at it since like way like a long 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 time ago. It's been years since I looked at Bevy. Um, third for draft. Hello, how are you doing today? Uh, Bevy is great. Doing a swarm bot game of some kind might also turn into an auto battler. Goal is 1 million bots need instancing that will come with 0 0.12. 1 million bots at the same time? That seems... That seems pretty impressive. They can do that. All of my game dev stuff that I've done has been... Well, with Rust, has been with uh, GGEZ, not with... Uh, Bevy. I, I think I did like one one stream where we took a look at Bevy, but that was like way like way early in Bevy's uh design. I think that was before they they had an ECS, but it was not the ECS they're using now. It was before they switched. So I'm I'm looking forward to like Bevy's continued um popularity. It's it's been growing a lot. I'm I'm look I'm looking forward to it uh, uh getting even bigger. You got it working, just cannot render one million cubes, 50 frames per second on a beefy development rig, but that was also a debug build. Well, like I don't know, maybe like, if you can get 50 frames per second with a million cubes, that's pretty good on debug. Uh you really love it after Unity, it's like a breath of fresh air. Really like the way they implemented ECS and the community assets are so good. Yeah, that's um that's one thing that like you notice from like these old like old um frameworks like Unity, uh they're they're stuck with like design patterns from when they built the thing. <laughs> and uh like yeah, it's probably like fully changed since like they, they created it initially, but like they're still like it's still tough to like make big changes. Starting from fresh is gonna let them do like modern design which is always nice. Uh, what we're working on uh, today uh, is a, a, we're building a course in Axum plus Rust. So if um, if you're familiar with Axum, it's a, or if you're unfamiliar with Axum, it's a backend server. So like think Express if you're familiar with Node or Flask with um, Python or some of the other ones. Um, Ooh, I'm forgetting the basic simple ones. But it's basically just a, a simple JSON API server that you can run in Rust. And it's really popular right now. Uh, the other main competitor in Rust would be uh, Actix Web. So uh, I am building a course to sort of like how, how to use it, how to do it. So we have articles over here on the right, left. And then on the right, we have um, uh, the code for like working with this. And the topic today is Redis and connecting to Redis inside of Axum and then using that. All right, uh, in this case, okay, so we'll use the result type. Okay, so I've basically got that. I just wanna make sure that this works. You're happy. You're running. Okay, can I? I should like save these, shouldn't I? Duplicate, so this is create. So for create, I want you to be a post uh, to save it. To save it and JSON is going to be hello Twitch chat. If I hit save, uh, we got a 200 OK, and then I can come back here to get it. Uh, hello, um, query, and there it goes. There we got it. Uh, 
Uh, that's 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 true. Now is the time. Show. I I think it's good to show some of these companies that there are repercussions for like big, huge, greedy changes. And the best way is to vote with our, I guess in this time, vote with our time. Okay, so that worked. I want to go back to here. And now we've updated you. So okay, so in this case, we'll install error and use the result time the result type from it in the queries file. So we got that. Uh, all right. Wait a second. I still have, I still have another. I haven't done this one. Uh, so you're gonna re result option value. Okay, I see that. So I should not find unwrap in here at all anymore. Good. Okay. Um, great. So now we have errors handler handled. We're no longer doing um, unwraps inside of the queries. So. This is handling redis errors. And before that, we had uh, create the queries. OK, so using Redis from a route handler. So in a route handler, we can now get the Redis state out and extract the data necessary uh, to. Uh, so in a route handler, we can now get the Redis state out and use uh, um, uh, and use Use it along with um, along with uh, uh, data passed in to um, set and retrieve from the store. Let's begin with the insert. Uh, we'll. All right, what did I do for this? Uh, data to save. Okay, so uh, we'll create a route called save it and um, uh, take in a JSON object that has a key and value. And we'll typing. Uh, then we'll uh, use our insert uh, query function to store the key value pair into Redis. Oh, hey, welcome, Zilby. Oh, you're just going to. Hi. All right, uh, so we've got that. OK, so what does this look like for us? Um, if I take everything here and I throw you in to this, there's going to be some things we want to remove, right? So I want, OK, so there's save, get it. I want to take away, save it. Uh, get it, query, I can remove you. And then we have, OK, so Stra okay, so pubstruct data to save. There, okay, so that is it 
Didn't I have error handling in here? Oh, I, I took away get. No, save it. Save it's right. I didn't do air handling right. I did it forget it, but not save it. Uh, we have result. Uh, that's going to be an in pull into response, and then we'll just do a status code. Um, okay, set. Where are you connecting? Okay, so Redis connect. Is that right? I don't think that's right. I think it should be Redis connect uh, queries. Um, oh yeah, Redis Connect queries insert. There we go. Then we'll map. Oh, not that. What? Then we dot map the error. Tracing error. Error inserting into Redis. Uh, and then we're going to return a status code. Internal server error. Question mark that and we can turn it OK with a uh, status code OK. Actually, this should be created. Okay, there we go. This is this is much better. Uh, if we run you, you should you should actually give us. I know. Go back to create. Yeah, we now get a two out of one created. So perfect. All right, this is what this is what I care about. Um, and then, okay, let me just do everything again. So this is going to be like 21. A little bit too much. Okay. What do I need to keep in here? Okay, so we have our use statements. Uh, we have save it, uh, get it, we get rid of. Get it query, we get rid of. Uh, so we have our obstruct to save, that's fine. And so we, we start with this stuff. Okay, cool. All right, so a uh, description about this. We are, um, Now, is there anything more we need to say about this this thing specifically? I don't think so. Okay, so next, we'll need 